Coming up right now on Lifestyle Magazine, Dr. John McDougall and the connection between diet and autism. Here are your hosts, Mike and Gail Tucker. Thank you so much. Thank you. How are you doing, John? It's good to have you here, well, as you. always. Our good friend, Dr. John McDougall, is back with us today, and he's going to talk to us about the connection between diet and mental health. So is there really a connection? You know, people wouldn't think so. I, no. I, it's not very often discussed. I mean, they, they would think about things like maybe caffeine and how right. it affects their mind. And, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. that's why people consume caffeine is because it's one of the last legal drugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, and well-loved. And really well-loved, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and also they get the connection with alcohol. But uh, the, the food is, I mean, in, in the, the number of people's lives and the, mm -hmm. um, just the sheer bulk of what you eat compared to, say, caffeine or alcohol, the food is huge. Mm -hmm. And so if mm -hmm. it did have an effect, it could be tremendous. Right. And actually, I know it, it, it is a tremendous effect. We, we see worldwide, when we look at various populations of people, we see a direct correlation with depression mm -hmm. and schizophrenia and eating the Western diet. The Come diet on. high in meat and dairy, low in uh, starches, vegetables. Depression and, and schizophrenia. And schizophrenia, both worldwide. And uh, there have been, you know, there's been research done for over 50 years on the connection between what we eat and depression, for example. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me just give you a little background on how that works. Uh, there are what we call neurotransmitters, right. chemicals in the brain. Right. Mm -hmm. And the proportions, the amount of these neurotransmitters transmitters depends upon what you eat. Mm -hmm. And people have probably heard about uh, the amino acid tryptophan. Right. right. Okay. In fact, they used to sell turkey, tryptophan. They talk about that, yeah, they, they used to talk yeah. about it in terms of turkey, mm -hmm. but that's that's the incorrect message. But they used to sell it actually <laughs> I know. as pills. I knew exactly. you would say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is, and I'll tell you why. They used to sell it as pills. So you eat trip. The tryptophan gets into the body, it gets into the nervous system, and it makes serotonin. Mm -hmm. Serotonin kind of quiets the whole world around you, so everything's not so exciting. Right. It relieves depression. It mutes hunger. Mm -hmm. It's a very important neurochemical. Mm -hmm. Well, here's where where the connection comes. Uh, to get that uh, tryptophan past what we call the blood brain barrier, blood, brain, mm -hmm. get it past this, this membrane, but it has to go through little gates. Okay. And those little gates, they're occupied by other heavy neutral amino acids. Okay. okay. So tryptophan has to get in the gate to get through into, into, the, into the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Well, if you eat animal foods, I'm talking about beef, chicken, fish, dairy products, they occupy all the little gates. And now your tryptophan can't get through, and now you can't make the serotonin. As a result, you get depressed. Okay. So d the components of the food make a huge difference in, in just the, you know, the basics. But there's another mechanism here, too. Uh, it has to do with schizophrenia and autism. Okay. And it's a, kind of an allergic phenomenon, or people have described it as uh, almost a psychedelic type of reaction. You know, when people take magic mushrooms and LSD mm -hmm. and yeah. things yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. They know these chemicals get into the brain, and they, they, they stimulate things, and they cause people to have really... Uh, um, uh, change perceptions, uh, really bizarre, bizarre <laughs> mm -hmm. thinking. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the food proteins do that too, okay? Particularly food proteins, the ones that have been identified are those in milk, we're talking about cheese, mm -hmm. and also in a group of plant foods that we identify as gluten, as okay. high in gluten, which is an amino acid, high in gluten. And those would be wheat, barley, and rye. So what happens is the gluten protein from the wheat, barley, and rye, and or... The casein protein from milk gets into the nervous system and it acts like a drug. It acts like LSD or, you know. So this I drink is milk and I hallucinate. Well, some people do. You see, seriously. Seriously. You do? No. no I'm not saying you seriously. <laughs> that's a question. Uh, you know, seriously, some people do. And it may not be, uh, you know, the, the wild, bizarre hallucinations that we, you know, typically think about right. these powerful psychedelic drugs, but a subtle, a subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, a distortion of the environment, so much so that it's not subtle to those around you and mm -hmm. for you dealing with the world. But it, you get this distortion because of these neuroactive peptides. That means neurologically active proteins that are found in wheat and also dairy foods. And, and it may not happen to you, Gail, or to Mike, mm -hmm. or to myself, mm -hmm. but there are some sensitive people, and maybe those people are sensitive because their gut opens up and allows these proteins to easily get into the bloodstream. Or maybe something else about them is going on that we haven't identified yet. But for whatever reason, you know, these people have, suffer s terribly mm -hmm. from uh, eating certain kinds of foods. And the nice thing is, is, you know, people have discovered this. And it's not a... It's not a a well-known message, and I have to be very blunt as to why it's not well-known, is because there's no profit behind it. 
So you've got all these drug companies out there that sell drugs for right. autism or, or schizophrenia, or, uh -huh. and they give you quizzes uh, uh, to see whether you're crazy right. or not, you know, so <laughs> that you can get into the market. And they sell all these drugs, and that's where everybody thinks it's at, is in the medications. It's not. The medications are of minimal benefit with serious costs, serious side effects. Mm -hmm. But a cure, and I'm really talking about a cure for depression, schizophrenia, autism, and other mental problems can be had. And I believe by the vast majority of people, if Simply they got this the nugget of knowledge, yeah. and so, you know, they, they don't eat the, the animal foods and they don't eat the gluten-containing foods. They eat a diet of potatoes and this rice. And absolutely fascinating. And we're going to have more. We're going to be right back. Our next guest has fought the battle with autism and won. Stay with us. Thank you. We're back. Barry Silberberg knows what it's like to live with an autistic child. Barry, welcome to Lifestyle Magazine. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for being here. So when did you first notice that something was different with your child? Well, probably as he got close to about two years old, his okay. eating habits had changed. Okay. Um, and in hindsight, after we found out he wasn't diagnosed till six and a half. So we had six quite a, a struggle. Half. Yes. Okay. Until we realized what was going on. Um, he was having severe meltdowns. He would just throw himself to the floor and just scream. Hmm. He had severe sensory issues. Mm -hmm. um, couldn't stand loud noises, even with earplugs. It was still just, he was so hypersensitive to the hearing. Um, he couldn't go outside without sunglasses. The lights were so bright. Right. Uh -huh. um, smells. If I would even be cooking onions or garlic or anything like that, he would just run upstairs and just scream. Oh, really? Um, it, he was in pain. Everything was He sensitive. was in pain. Um, you have other children in, in the house as well, right? He was my firstborn. Oh, he's well, your he's firstborn. firstborn. Okay. Right. Okay. Firstborn. right. So, so there was nothing to compare it exactly. to. Exactly. Exactly. And when it's your first child, you don't really know. And okay. he was very rough and mean to other children too. But he was a boy. Yeah. You know, yeah. he was doing yeah. boy things. You know, and all kids have tantrums. Absolutely. Things. That, Absolutely. And so you just, it's hard to know what's normal. You just didn't and what's know. Not. And okay. he spoke. You know, many mm -hmm. autistic children. That's right. Do not speak. Mm -hmm. But he was extremely verbal. At, well, when he, when he was diagnosed, mm -hmm. what was the impact of that on you? Well, I actually helped get him diagnosed. <laughs> Is that right? You know, because nobody could tell me what was wrong with my boy. Yeah. Um, I knew something was wrong. And um, I kept going to the teachers in the school and saying, what's right. wrong with him? You know, he's yeah. not playing with other children. Right. He's, he's um, you know, not social like the other kids. He likes to play with the same things. And even though he was so verbal... Um, I knew something was wrong, and I kept researching and 